Hello, and welcome to our Oblate Morning Prayer on this Friday, January 15. I'd also like to welcome you to my home, just as you at this moment are welcoming me to yours. We're not strangers. My name is Gerard, Gerard Bennett. This morning prayer series is one of the positive things that have emerged from this terrible pandemic. And let's be honest, while the pandemic has caused a lot of pain, people losing jobs, people's businesses being put in jeopardy, far too many dying, countless numbers sick and many of them facing many months of recovery, it has also brought with it beacons of light and of hope. I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that I have witnessed many examples of kindness, of love and of care a living out during this time of the greatest commandment of all, which is to love my neighbour. This morning prayer series too is a beacon of light and hope. It arose from Lisa's initiative to do something when in the first lockdown churches and places of worship were off limits. Of course, we could always have prayed as we do now. The pandemic didn't create this opportunity, but maybe what it did was heightened our awareness of our need to pray, and not just pray on our own, but to gather and pray as a community of believers, and very especially to pray together as an oblate family. Like you, I hope that with the arrival of the vaccine, the terrible consequences of this virus come to an end soon, although we'll have to be patient. It won't be next month or the month after that. But there is hope and so we look forward to fewer getting sick and dying, people being able to go to work and earn a living again. And we can also hope that afterwards we hold on to the good things that this time has heightened for us. So let's begin our prayer, praying always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our minds so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Our Gospel reading from today's Mass is from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus returned from Capernaum, word went around that he was back, and so many people collected that there was no room left even in front of the door. He was preaching the word to them when some people came bringing him a paralytic carried by four men. But as the crowd made it impossible to get the man to him, they stripped the roof over the place where Jesus was, and when they had made an opening, they lowered the stretcher on which the paralytic lay. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, My child, your sins are forgiven. Now, some scribes were sitting there and they thought to themselves, How can this man talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God? Jesus, inwardly aware that this is what they were thinking, said to them, Why do you have these thoughts in your hearts? Which of these is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, pick up your stretcher, and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he turned to the paralytic, I order you, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go off home. And the man got up, picked up his stretcher at once and walked out in front of everyone, so that they were all astounded and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. May your words, O Lord, be in my thoughts, on my lips and in my heart. May they be my guide on life's journey and keep me near to you. My life journey with the Oblates started in 1978 when I first went on the Oblate Lord's Pilgrimage. Over all those years since, and to this day, Lourdes has probably become one of the most important parts of my life. In some ways, Lourdes, and especially the Oblate Charism, have clearly affected the person I have become, and are the lens through which I have learned the way in which I live my life. And believe me, I still have too much to learn, 
to be true to all that I have learned. I don't think it was an accident or happenstance that my lured life has been in the context of my oblate life. I am not from Inchicore, and until that first trip, I knew nothing about the oblates. But that was the call, and so it is that I sit here today, a committed member of the oblate family and everything that it is. Sometimes when people hear of my travels to Lourdes, they ask, have you ever seen a miracle? I don't find it easy to answer that question, or at least not easy to answer in a way that might always make sense. Since 1856 and the first apparition of Our Lady to St. Bernadette at the Rock of Massabielle in Lourdes and to the countless millions who have gone there in pilgrimage ever since, there have been 70 recognised miracles, the most recent recognised in February 2019. 70. It isn't a lot, is it? I know in my heart that these things have happened, just as the paralytic got up off his stretcher and walked. But for me, and the reason that I find a question about whether I have seen a miracle to be such a challenge, is that while I have never seen a physical miracle in front of my eyes, I am equally certain that I have seen hundreds of miracles. I love this Gospel reading. Jesus demonstrated his power and his authority by commanding the paralytic to get up off his stretcher and go home, which the man did. But he did this after the scribes wondered at how this same man, Jesus, could say earlier to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. Forgiving sins is invisible. It is a matter truly of faith. And if we think on it for just a moment, how amazing it is to be forgiven. But being invisible was too much for the scribes. And so, to prove his power to them, Jesus cured the paralytic. I know this too. These invisible miracles happen in Lourdes every day, every hour, every minute. And let me say here, not just in Lourdes. It is easy to think that I need to go to Lourdes or Fatima or Knock to find a miracle. But of course, it can happen in our own home, our own community. In fact, not just can, it does. And it happens where we are, because Jesus is right here, just as he was in that place in the Gospel story. Most years in Lourdes, on the evening that we arrive, I am asked to say a few words of welcome to the Oblate Youth Service. I'm especially conscious of those there for the first time, as I was all those years ago in 1978. I don't have any set words as such, but somewhere in what I say, I say to them that if they have come to Lourdes hoping to see a paralysed person get off their stretcher, or out of their wheelchair, then they are likely to be disappointed. Though, maybe not. But I ask them to think about the fact that they themselves may be the miracle for one of our sick with us, and to allow themselves to be that miracle. A kind word, a listening ear, a simple act of kindness, any one of these might be the miracle that someone needs. And all that is needed of them in the days that lie ahead is to allow God to use them in that way. God's power and authority are really beyond what we can understand and grasp. Our challenge, a little like that of the scribes who were watching on that day, is to have faith. We know that God is ever-present in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And in this time of pandemic, God is here, just as he was and just as powerful as when he said to the paralytic that his sins were forgiven. That very same God is present right now, today. And as I say to those young people, and I have to say to myself too, I have to allow God to work his miracle in his way. And all it may require is my kind word, my listening ear, my simple act of kindness. The words of St. Teresa of Avila come to mind at this moment. Christ has no body on earth but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on this world, the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Let's finish by saying, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May the good Lord bless us and bless our day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care.